Moving on to our task number two with RIP V2 metric. So now we have to configure RIP V2 and R8 and switch one and then advertise the lead back 10 through 12. And then configure R1 and R4 to accept the RIP routes from R8 and switch one and then advertise them across DMPLS VPN. And then we need to configure R1 so that switch one will see routes to R8, loop back 10 and 11 with the hop count of four. And then we want to also make switch one ignore the R8 loop back 12. And then we need to verify connectivity between R8 and switch one loop back 10 through 11. Okay, so now we're gonna be looking at our second VRF, which is the VRFC2 here with the R8 and switch one. Then we want to switch one to only see R8 loop back 10 and 11, and then ignore loop back 12. Okay, so we're pretty much gonna go through the same configuration exercise, we're starting off with our router R8. So I might move a little quicker since it's just going to be repeating what we have completed in task number one. So version two, passive interface default, no passive. For our R8, it's Ethernet 00. Right here. So network command for our loopback, it's 8000. And then for our network, it's 162.16.00 for our Ethernet 00. Okay, so that's for R8. Then for R1, we do show IP VRF. Here we have our VRF C2 with the interface fast01.18 that's facing R8. So we do router ripped. Since we have the majority of the configuration with the ripped already, so let's do a show run with the, to quickly a recap what we've done. Router ripped. So here we have the version 2 passive interface default. So we have to do a no passive of our fast01.18. And then we have to come up with address family for VRFC2. Okay, so no pass fast 01.18. And then address family IPv4 VRF for our C2 network 16.00. And then for our incoming routes from BGP, we have to redistribute BGP 100 with the metrics transparent into the RIP. Okay, so do no show IP route VRF. C2 RIP, and we are now seeing R8 loopback interfaces. That's good. So let's go ahead and take care of the task right here. Let's say configure R1. So the switch one will see the route of R8 10 through 11 loopbacks as a hop count of four. So what it means is let's go back to a diagram. As the route being received by switch one, we want that hop counts to be four. So that means the metrics is coming out of R1. Route, BGP route to R4 that needs to have the value of 3. Okay, because R4 will add the matrix of 1 to the route and it will make it 4. So here we have to manipulate our metric because the default, the matrix coming from R8 is just 1. So we need to overwrite that. And that's just for the loopback 10 and 11. So we have to come up with the prefix list R8. It's called LO10 11 permit. 8800, we can do a slash 23 less than equal 24 to include just those two routes. Okay, and then we have a do a route map ripped BGP, uh, ripped to BGP underscore C2, permit 10, match IP address prefix list, copy paste, and then we have to override the metrics with the set metrics command. And we said the metric value has to be 3. So when it reaches uh, switch one, it will become four, right? And then it also said, as part of our task, is to make sure that the switch one will ignore R8 loopback 12. Okay, the way to do that, if you understand RIP, RIP has the maximum hop count of 16. So if a route with the hop count that's larger than 16, it will be ignored by the receiving routers. So what we need to do is to make sure that the R8 loopback 12 we have the hop count of 16 by the time it gets to switch one. So you can either override the metrics with the value of 15, or you can just use the anything larger than 15, no matter the fact. So we can go ahead and set the metric 16 for that. Now on R1, we can do IP prefix list. This time it'll be R8, loop back 12. Permit 8820 slash 24. And then we'll get under the same route map. Sequence 20, match IP address prefix list. 
and then we can go ahead and set the metrics of 16. Okay, and this is for R8, loopback 12. Now we get under router BGP 100. All we need to do is redistribute from ripped to BGP under VRF C2, and then redistribute ripped route map, and we call it ripped to BGP underscore C2. Okay, and now if you do a now show IP, BGP, VP, and V4, VRF C2, just to see how the route gets redistributed right here. You can see 880.881 has the matrix of 3, and then 882 has the matrix of 16. Okay, so we'll see in a minute here how those metrics gets passed along and becomes the ripped metrics or hop count. So now we have to complete the configuration on the other side, which is switch one. So we go over to switch one. And let's do a debug IP rip so we can see in a little bit the debug messages. Then we enable the router rips. No auto summary, version two. Let's do the network command for our loopback 10 through 12, slash eight. And then we have our network, I'm going to say to 16, zero, zero. Okay, so it's going to start advertising routes to R4, but we haven't really completed configuration on R4 quite yet. So let's do that, going back to R4. Router rip, no auto, version two, passive interface default, no passive, fast zero, zero. So you see here, show IP interface brief, a fast zero, zero is the one that's facing switch one. If you do show IP VRF, you will see that is also part of a VRFC2. Okay, and then we can do our address family, IPv4, VRFC2. Enable ripped on the physical interface, let's say to 1600. We're going to redistribute. Looks like a typo. Okay, fix that. And then we're going to redistribute from the incoming route from BGP 100 with the metrics of transparent. So we're just going to carry that over. And now if you do show IP route VRF C2 rib, we should be seeing a switch one loopback routes, which we do. And now for the routes that's going to be advertising out from our four to the rest of the network. So come up with the prefix list to filter out switch one loopback only, or loopback 10 through 12 only. Permit 10, 10, 0, 0, slash 22, let's then equal 24. And then we have our route map, rip to BGP, C2, permit 10, match IP address prefix list, switch one loopback. And then we get under router BGP 100. Address family IPv4, VRF, C2. Now we're going to redistribute from rip to BGP, copy paste our route map, enter. Okay, now if you show IP BGP, VPN V4, VRFC2, look at our BGP table for VRFC2. We see these local routes, switch one loop back 10 through 12, and then we also see remote routes coming in through IBGP that has the exact same metrics as it was advertised out from R1, so 3, 3, and 16. And at this point, R4 should be advertising this route that's being received into uh, ripped and should be received by switch one. So let me see, since we have a debug going on, let's do a undebug all on that. Let's do show IP route, VRF, uh, actually switch one doesn't know about VRF, so show IP route ripped. You can see that switch one is only knows about the PCE subnet between R1 and R8, and then the R8 loopback 10 and 11. As you can see, we're not seeing the R8 loopback 12, and that's because the metrics of the route coming in exceed or equal 16. Okay, so I'm just trying to find a debug message. Let's see if we can find that. Let's do a 882 right here. You can see it's receiving the 882 0 slash 24 with the hop of 16 and the route has been marked as inaccessible. Okay, while well, the metrics for the R8 
leave back 10 and 11 is coming in as metrics 4 as required by our task. Okay, so now going back to our 8 and do show IP route rip. And RA is seeing the R10 loopback 10 through 12 coming in with the metric of 2, which is the default, since we didn't manipulate any of the metrics in that direction. From RA, we can check the connectivity to switch 1 with the ping to 101001, sourcing from loopback 10. See that's pingable. And that's loopback 11 on switch 1. And you can ping loopback 12 as well, but as soon as we try to source it from loopback 12 of R8, and you can see that's failing because it's switch one, it's marking that route uh, R8 loopback 12 as inaccessible. Okay, and the last thing you want to check real quick is the cross communication between the two customers, the two VRFs. So if you're trying to ping from R8, let's say R7, which is in the VRFC one, it's totally different, uh, completely different VRF. So it's trying to ping 7701, sourcing from loopback 10 from R8. We can see that's not pingable as well. And that's pretty much the whole point of MPS VPN is to provide logical separation between the customer. And by that, that should complete our task number two. So as you can see that the RIP configuration for the PECE routing protocol is fairly straightforward. The RIP metrics gets carried across as is as part of the BGP metric, and you can also overwrite the metric value if you like. And running RIP v2, even uh, version 2 these days is less common unless you're dealing with a device that's not capable of any other routing protocols, and the only protocol that supports is RIP version 2. Otherwise, you would have gone with a protocol like EAGRP or a BGP for the routing protocol for the PEC. Okay, so that wraps up our video on MPLS VPN PEC with RIP v2. You can visit the website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmates.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.